In my last video, we brought it to you live from Las Vegas Supercharging Station. And next video, we're gonna give you exclusive content on the Tesla Plaid, the Model S and X. But in today's video, we're gonna go over the top five secrets that you might not know about a Tesla, especially important if you're thinking about getting a Tesla or you have one on delivery soon. Let's get right into this video. So we're gonna go over some secrets that you might not know about a Tesla, some hacks, if you will, that are gonna help you whenever you take delivery. And if you are thinking about getting a Tesla, make sure to check out the best accessories and the links in the description below. The accessories I've used over 15,000 miles of owning my Model 3. Let's get into point number one. So point number one, a secret and a tip, if you will, on how to maximize the range in your Tesla. And I wanna talk about this because I don't feel like it get talked about enough. How do you get more range? What are some tips on getting more range? So let's get into it. Now, a lot of Tesla owners don't talk enough about the new LFP battery. That's the lithium iron phosphate battery. And really what this means is the new base models of Model Ys and Model 3s have an LFP battery. So you can charge this battery to 100%. But how can you get even more range out of your Tesla? So something a lot of owners don't talk about are some tips on how to get more range. And if you did not know this, you can actually keep the stock aero cap rims on your Tesla. So if you did not elect for the aluminum premium rims or the Uber turbine rims, your Tesla will come with a stock version, which is meant to get you the most range. So if you're concerned about getting the most range, keep those on, but you can also do this. So did you know that there's different modes? And this is something I don't think a lot of people talk about is the chill mode. Now, whenever you think about Tesla and I talk about it all the time, I talk about that zero to 60, that maximum experience acceleration and it's a lot of fun but it takes a lot of your battery or at least more than it would if you were in chill mode and point number two a secret that nobody talks about when it comes to a tesla well the base range the base model of the model y and the model 3 is it really enough? And this is a secret because a lot of people think of the base range as being, well, it's the entry model Tesla. Is it going to be enough performance, enough range? Well, for most people, at least here in the United States, and I'm pretty sure in other countries as well, we don't have excessively long commutes. For so most people, if you're looking at a Model Y and a Model 3, it is enough range. Most Tesla owners charge at home, so when you factor in your commute, when you factor in how much acceleration zero to 60 you realistically need, now of course the performance that you get out of a long range or performance vehicle, it's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. But I wanna tell you this little hint that if you're looking at the price tag and you're considering, well, is the standard range going to be enough? I can tell you from driving my Model 3 rear wheel drive, the standard range, it is more than enough. So I wanted to bring this up because I feel like a lot of people when they're considering the rear wheel drive or the, the base model, the standard range Model Y that is going to start coming out here soon versus the performance or long range, you might be thinking, well, is it enough? As somebody who's used the car, the Model 3 again for 15,000 miles, I just wanted to put in here a little secret, a little tip for you if you're trying to uh, save on that monthly cost, it is more than enough. So now going into point number three, did you know that a recent study just came out and showed that Teslas are 50% less likely to get into accidents versus traditional vehicles? 50% less likely here in the United States. I'd be very curious to see what other countries' statistics are, but 50% less likely to get into an accident now Autopilot is helping you with that. There are things like lane departure avoidance, emergency braking. Now, if you're unaware of what these are, your car has eight external cameras constantly scanning traffic around you. And I can tell you, as somebody who has had emergency braking applied now twice, it is a absolute amazing feature. Now, you might not think that you're going to use it, but 50% less likely, did you know that? That is an unknown secret of Teslas. They're that much safer than a traditional vehicle. So now we're gonna get into point number four in a list of five. So stick around because I think the last one is exceptionally important. But number four is the unspoken storage. 
So point number four is all about the storage. And this is a secret because these are things that aren't really highlighted to you when you take delivery or really pointed out in detail unless you see it on a video. So we're gonna cover it, and that is the frunk space and the trunk space that you get in your Tesla. So I can't tell you how often I've had to store maybe car cleaning supplies or bags of groceries in my trunk. And of course, for the best car cleaning accessories, check out those links in the description. I'm very particular on those. But when it comes to the storage in your Tesla, is it enough? How easy is it to get to? And will you be disappointed? If you are getting things like food delivery and you wanna keep it separate, that food and that smell from your cabin, the frunk is a great place for it. And it's so much space, I haven't even had to use it very often at all. And that's after driving 15,000 miles. But it is a secret and an unknown fact that that storage in your trunk area underneath the uh, carpet area and on the side of your Tesla is really the unsung hero of your car. It's used quite often, almost every single day. And lastly, point number five is all about acceleration. And something you might not have known, I have had the pleasure of driving my rear wheel drive Model 3 and recently taken test drives with other Tesla owners in a Model S Plaid and a Model X Plaid. My brother has a Model Y performance, so when you're comparing the acceleration of the Model 3 standard range, the base model of the Tesla, is it enough? So when it comes to acceleration, no matter if it's the Model 3, the Model Y, S or X, something that I notice no matter what car you're going to get is the consistency. Now, whether it's 100% battery, whether it's on 50% battery, something I have noticed over owning my Model 3 is how consistent that zero to 60 time really is. So if you go on the website and you're going through the spec of your new Tesla, that 5.8 or three second zero to 60, you're gonna see that all the time in your car very consistently and it is very, very impressive. So I know other Tesla owners will agree that instant torque, that constant available acceleration if you're merging onto the highway or you need to make a safe pass, the availability of that zero to 60, no matter what battery percentage you're on, is always reliable and I'm really happy that it is. So let me know what you think of that list of five in the comment section below. Which Tesla are you thinking of getting? The Model Y, the Model 3, or maybe another model of Tesla? Let me know exactly which one you're thinking or even have on delivery down below. So hopefully these list of five tips and secrets help you on the road once you get your Tesla. And again, for the best accessories on your Tesla, make sure to check out those links in the description for the ones that I recommend after driving my car 15,000 miles. Drop a like and consider subscribing for even more Tesla reviews, videos, and more. Again, this is Matt from Frunk to Trunk, and we will see you in the next video.